Okay, a nice quick video coming out today, just looking at anaerobic respiration, being how do we produce energy when we don't have any oxygen? This can exist in times of intense exercise where you're working really, really hard, so your heart's pumping as fast as it can to try and supply blood to every single cell, but it can't quite keep up, so a lot of cells will not have all the oxygen they need, so will partake in some anaerobic respiration. Now, I will assume that the people watching this, you lovely people, I've already seen either my full length lecture video on aerobic respiration. It's about half an hour long, but you only need to watch it once, maybe twice. And then I've done four short videos on uh, each step individually. There are two steps that you will need to understand to quite get why we have aerobic respiration, how it works. And they are glycolysis and oxidative phosphorylation, both of which are linked at the bottom. Either way, I'll quickly go through them here. So, starting with glycolysis, we take this as glycolysis, as in the splitting of glucose. So, we start with our glucose here. I'm not going to balance the equation. And we get pyruvate. We have two ATP going into the equation, and we have four ATP coming out. This means we have a total of two ATP being produced. Brilliant. What we also have is some NAD going in, and that is then reduced to form either reduced NAD or NADH. They're the same thing, essentially. Um, it's just different names, because if you call it NADH, it's NAD with a hydrogen on it. If you call it reduced NAD, it means that it was positive, and then it was reduced to a neutral, so NADH. This NADH then takes place in oxidative phosphorylation, as I have lovely written as oxyphos. So this NADH starts into the reaction. It's split to form NAD plus, plus electrons plus protons. This NAD can then go back to glycolysis or the link reaction or the Krebs cycle or anywhere where it is used to generate NADH. The electrons will then take place in the electron transport chain where the electron will start here. They'll go into this protein from that protein will go on to the next, from that protein will go on to the next. That is the electron transport chain. Oxygen, because it's aerobic respiration, it means it has oxygen, is then the final electron acceptor, taking that electron from that final one there. We also will be having our protons coming from our intermembrane space, and they will also go to the oxygen through ATP synthase to form water. So, Oxygen is the final electron acceptor in the electron transport chain. If we have no oxygen, the conditions are anaerobic, then this electron can't move onto this one because it's already been reduced, which means that can't move to there, which means that this won't be produced because there's no need to split NADH. All of the carriers have already been filled with electrons. If we don't have any NADH being split, we don't have any NAD being produced. So how's glycolysis going to happen? Because if we don't have any in any a oh god, that is a very difficult one to say. Say that one when you're drunk. If we don't have any NAD being produced, then we can't put it into the glycolysis reaction to produce NADH and pyruvate. And if we don't have pyruvate, we can't do the link reaction to produce the acetyl coenzyme A. If we can't produce the acetyl coenzyme A, we can't do the Krebs cycle where we can't produce NADH, but we couldn't produce NADH anyway because we don't have any NAD because it's not being split because the electrons are full because we don't have any oxygen. So what we do is instead of trying to move it on, we just stick with what we know. So simply we'll start with glycolysis. We have glucose to start off with. That is split to pyruvate exactly as before. We get two molecules of ATP exactly as before and we get our NADH being produced from our NAD+. So taking into account our problem that we can't just move this NADH on, what we do instead is we then reduce the pyruvate by giving back that hydrogen. That reforms our NAD+, and that can go back my beautifully straight line, to the beginning, to take place in glycolysis. That NAD is 
GNADH, and then that NADH gives it back to the pyruvate, and it will form lactate, otherwise known as lactic acid. So when you get that burning, we already know that it's lactic acid, or at least most people know that it's lactic acid. Well, this is what it is. It's, it's NADH reducing pyruvate to reform NAD. Now, there are two large problems. Is the, the reason it gives you that burning is because lactic acid or lactate the, is poisonous. It's, it's not supposed to be there. We're supposed to really respire with oxygen. So we get this toxic buildup, which leads to pain and fatigue. Also, we only get two molecules of ATP being produced, which is pretty small. So that's not enough to supply your body for a long period of time. It's just enough to tie you over. What happens is when we get our oxygen back, the lactate is then oxidized back to pyruvate, and that pyruvate can then go on to the link reaction. And that is anaerobic respiration complete. It's just an extra little step on glycolysis to reproduce NAD. Brilliant.